ceasefire now to save lives. We cannot continue to stand idly by numb as we watch this death toll climb. We stand here today calling for a ceasefire because all life is precious. Where is your humanity? Where is your outrage? Where is your care for people? Yeah, the Democratic squad members there banding together, calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Even as Hamas continues their barrage against Israel and rallies the world in a second day of rage. Yeah, just another meeting of the Hamas caucus at the podium. Texas Congressman Pete Sessions joins us with his reaction. Congressman, thank you for being here. Uh, that, what do you make of those voices uh, taking the lead uh, in, in um, how a lot of Democrats feel about the conflict right now? Well, in fact, this is not a new issue. They have sought out people from the Middle East to move to the United States to build uh, what they would choose to here, including the political careers of a number of these these members of Congress. But what what is amazing is is that there was very little said at the time Hamas did what it did. They called yeah. that tolerable. They called that well justifiable, and in fact, it's not. And Israel is now allowed to and did protect themselves and they should end the matter and make sure it does not happen again. Last time, 50 years ago, they took care of that matter. It's back. They need to take care of it again. Congressman, I found it remarkable that Congresswoman Ayanna Presley ended her remarks with scripture passages. Um, this from a ruthless, uh, you know, and the scripture passage was about babies and everything else. This from a very ruthless um, pro abort the entire squad is. Well, there's no question about it. They have different views, different values, and different ideas about the future. This is the Democratic Party today. And you could see it in the streets of New York. You could see it in the streets of Chicago. It is what they have brought to the United States. They have brought them uh, because they choose to change the United States of America to where we don't even look like ourselves. And it is being done right before our eyes with not just the Biden administration, but the support and defense of the Democratic Party. You know, Congressman, if this happened maybe a couple of weeks ago, perhaps House leadership will be looking at some of these members saying we should be, they should be censored on the, uh, on the House floor, maybe even look at the committees they're part of, but uh, can't do that because you don't have a speaker right now. So can't do a whole lot of anything. You're looking to run for speaker. Uh, tell us why it is you should be the speaker of the House. The conference needs to come together, and we have put essentially our top two or three people up. They have uh, spent a good bit of time telling us their plans, their ideas, but it takes 217 votes on the floor to become speaker, and we are divided in the conference. The conference is now looking for, and I am looking for bringing us together. Back in 29, 2009, we were essentially wandering in a desert together. We were 40 seats back. Part of my job was to bring us together, focus us on the activity that needed to be done. Got 96 people who would commit themselves to make sure we won the majority, and we won 63 net seats. The Republican conference, when we work together, were very effective and we get our job done. We're a little bit divided. It's time to come together. I believe that I can do exactly that if we work together and it will be done because we give them a pathway of working these problems out and moving us forward. Well, Congressman, it seems you're a lot of bit uh, divided these days. And it, it, as, as Mike Waltz pointed out earlier in the show, he said it, it, with, when Speaker McCarthy was elected, it was about policy differences or process differences, but it's become personal. There's a lot of personal animosity inside the caucus right now, it seems. How, do you, how does one person overcome that, considering the factions and the finger pointing? Well, that's, Mike makes a good point, and he is correct. What we need to do is come together. Instead of working at each other, we need to work with each other. I have done this in the past. We have uh, ideas, just as Jim Jordan did, just as Steve Scalise did about moving forward. You move to forward to make sure that we protect this country. The economic security of this country is hanging by a thread. We must be successful. 
I think our conference can get it done. That's what Monday will be about. And if we accomplish this, uh, America will see great things. And I think our conference, that's still a young conference, can learn to work together. Congressman, I've been talking to a lot of Republicans around the country. They are disgusted by what's happening because they feel like Republicans should be united now more than ever, <clears throat> especially in the only place where we actually, you know, where Republicans actually have a majority. Um, and some of them are concerned that this chaos and this lack of coming together on this leadership issue is actually potentially jeopardizing um, maybe even the presidential election. Rachel, what you say is exactly true. We have not presented ourselves to the American people in a way that they would want to see us be successful and them believing that they could be successful with us being a majority party. It's my hope that we will focus ourselves now as we began doing yesterday. We began talking about exactly that. It's my hope that my uh, speakership would allow us not just to work together, but to achieve the things where people went from fight to fix. And it's that fight to fix transition that we need to get done. Well, Congressman, uh, good luck to you. If you're running for speaker, it looks like you probably have more than 200 phone calls to make between now and, uh, and when you <laughs> may, meet everyone. So uh, good luck to you and thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.